O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be Thou our guide while life shall last and our eternal home. These are words our church knows well, not just because we have sung this familiar hymn throughout the years. We know these words because we have experienced them. As a church that is nearly 200 years old, we know that God has been with us from the very beginning. And not only has God been with us, God has led the way. When the Mississippi Conference gathered, prayed, and sent the Reverend Alexander Talley in 1821 to Pensacola to establish what we know today, God was leading the way. When a lot was purchased and our first small wooden church building was erected in 1828, God was leading the way. Through fires, epidemics, storms, and war, God was leading the way. In rebuilding and revivals, God was leading the way. But when God leads the way, we must have the faith to follow. At a time when Pensacola only had a population of 20,000, our church had the faith to build a sanctuary to hold over 1,000. As the church continued to grow, we had the faith to establish other Methodist churches in our community. Church members like Mary McMillan had the faith to lead the comfort of their homes and follow God halfway around the world. These are but a few examples of countless times when this church has stepped out in faith. We are blessed that through our history, God has been with us and thankful that those who have gone before had the faith to follow. In 2008, we heard the call once again. This was a call to step out in faith again and add additional space for growth. This was a call to expand our ministries by purchasing the historic Governor Perry home and the attached building now known as Wesley Abbey. This was an ambitious project where we were asked to follow the faith examples of the past, give sacrificially in the present, and trust God to provide for the future. One day, Wesley and I were sitting around talking about the future and dreaming about how we could welcome more people to Christ. And we began to think about starting a fourth service where we could have contemporary music, but also be consistent with our history and our liturgical legacy as United Methodist. It was amazing at how quickly the entire congregation embraced this vision. Our members came forward and they filled out pledge cards and they, um, they made a down payment on our church's future. As I've sat in the Perry Home Parlor during a Monday night Bible study, or was part of a Sunday school class or a spiritual formation class in one of the classrooms in the Perry Home, I knew that First Church was a place where I was gonna be able to connect with very real people of faith, join in a very real ministry of sharing the gospel, and be able to grow in my own faith as a follower of Christ. Young, fresh young families, it's so important to, uh, to have them coming into the church. Your, your lifeblood is your young families coming in to keep it going. So I think ICON has been very instrumental in getting these young families to come to this church. Albie and I started coming to the ICON service um, as a place to bring our two boys. ICON is a place where they're comfortable and they are familiar. It gives us a place to kind of all be a family and do a worship together. We didn't know First Church without the ICON service, but I don't know that we would have stayed at First Church if the ICON service had not been an option for us. I think ICON is a beautiful blend of traditional and contemporary. Um, for me, it gives the traditional service that I'm used to with the blend of contemporary music that speaks to me in a way that I never expected it to. Without ICON, I don't think I would have been here. Whenever um, the ICON service started, I was eight years old. Without this building, I wouldn't be able to do Kid Connect in here, which I teach. I wouldn't be able to do VBS in here. I don't know what like First United Methodist would be without this. What I think is wonderful about our contemporary service is the people who planned the service and planned how it was going to be made it not only contemporary with the music, but they kept enough of the 
uh, sacramental things, uh, the holy things. The combination of traditional and the contemporary was something that really appealed to us. And I don't think we would have ever come to this church had it not been for ICON, because that's what we needed. That's what we, I think, craved in our spiritual lives. Thinking about the families like us who wouldn't have come to First Church or, you know, it wasn't even on our radar, but then because of a leap of faith that you guys made a decision about that our lives and our kids would be so impacted. God is not a building. Church is not a place. Church is a, a people. Um, and, and I don't in the end think it's this building that's important. It is the people that come in this building who worship God every week, who find um, God in this building as we come together as a people. It's one thing to hear stories about how God has been faithful in the past. It's a totally different experience to see God's faithfulness around you in a very personal way. And I feel like that's, that's what's happened here. This project would not have been possible without you. Your faith and sacrificial gifts have impacted so many lives and will forever be a part of the great story of this church. Thank you for hearing the call. Thank you for having the faith to expand the ministries of this historic place. And by the grace of God, may we continue to hear God's voice and have the faith to follow for years to come. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be thou our guide while life shall last and our eternal home.